recruiting. Yeah, Nebraska adds Bryce Turner. Yeah. Bryce Turner. A, speed, a speedster from Texas. Schaefer, uh, was this guy on your radar at all before the commitment no. earlier this week? Uh, no, he was not on my radar. I don't think he was on a lot of radars. Um, but I, it works as a sort of the perfect example of what Matt Rule is going to try to do, and especially in this recruiting class. I mean, I, I think – they are going to try to pick spots where they're going to go into actual recruiting battles. Otherwise, they're just looking for guys that have maybe an elite trait and see if they can develop uh, because they just the, the reality of, of what you walk into when you get hired in a job with only a few weeks before that first signing period. You can't go out and try to just flip kids at this point, it, especially when you've been in the NFL. You don't have those relationships developed. You know, Luke Fickle might have a little bit easier of a time of it if there's certain guys because he's been recruiting them for a while. <laughs> Matt Rule hasn't been recruiting for several years. So you can't – it's a lot harder to just come in and start flipping all these pieces. So they've, they've basically done it where they're identifying certain traits individuals have, uh, and so they're going off the board a little bit. And so that's why you're seeing guys like Bryce Turner. Uh, there's, a, there's a receiver running back coming in named Quentin Ivis. Uh, they they were looking at an offensive lineman committed to ODU. None of these players had, um, Dominion. yeah, uh, none of these players had like ratings in the twenty four seven system. They hadn't been like fully scouted at that point, point. Uh, and they all had their own sort of unique thing. Where especially with Bryce Turner, you're talking about one of the fastest players in the in the country. Uh, Jalen Lloyd, another example, like the very first thing that they did when they made an offer in state was to go get the, the best track athlete and basically say, all right, you know, if you want to play football, we'll see how this works. Jalen Lloyd, Omaha West side yeah. speed. And he's coming in this weekend for an official visit. Uh, so going back to Bryce Turner, I mean, a six foot two, 180 pound wide receiver, you get him here. He's blazing fast. Like their whole thing is we can teach you how to be the receiver aspect of it. We can't teach you to be can't fast speed. Yeah. So just like uh, Chim D. Ono, the, the offensive line commit to, to Old Dominion, like he's 6'6", 270. He's a, he's a champion um, shot putter and, and uh, discus person. Like he's just a really, really good athlete with great footwork. And they can teach his raw ability to play offensive line, or they think they can, or Donovan Rayola will have that opportunity to if mm -hmm. they can get that commitment. Uh, but – they can't, you know, like they can do that aspect of it, but they're just trying to get elite yeah. one elite skill of a guy and see what you can get out of. That him. makes sense. Bryce Turner 10 to 5 in the 100 meters, Fast. which is absolutely flying. Yeah. I mean, that would be the state record in Nebraska by a pretty sizable margin. That's Trey Palmer's fat. Fast. Trey Palmer fast. Yeah, and we we've talked in the show that you know, maybe I've said more than sip on this regard, but I, I don't I don't really care about the rankings of kids. In terms, you know, we, we talk about all these guys, Iowa, Wisconsin, always have these players that nobody ever talks about. They're unheralded. They become all Big Ten players. I don't know. can play in the system. Sure. Why can't that be the case here, too? It you can know. be. You have to have a system that develops over time because yeah. they have to have enough success that they can sustain something. Is that rule? I, I think it can be. Um, you know, I like this higher because I think it's blue of both Temple or is, you know, we got to build a foundation and then we build around the foundation. And then he left in both of those situations because there was a better job out there. He's not going to the NFL again. Uh, and I don't know that there's a ton of jobs that he would leave Nebraska for. And Especially even if, if he does good, yeah. and he's leaving on his own accord, that's not the worst thing because he did what he came here to do. Build the foundation. I mean, I think he used the quote, you leave a place better than you found it, yeah. which is a big boy scout motto. I mean, that is a, that's a truism in college football. Like, Jackson State can't be overly mad at Deion Sanders because he left it significantly better than he found. Mm -hmm. like, so, to if, a power five you know, and we're a long way away from where Nebraska is in reality right now, and they have to build that foundation. Yep. I think that's what he's setting out to uh, do. Now, yeah, that'll, that'll lead us right into the, the discussion. The, won't the discussion gets into can he do that at the same time while also winning six games? Now there's the question. Boom. We will butt heads, me and Jake, on that. For a long time, although I'm starting to come around a little bit to what you're saying. He's a top 10 paid coach in the country. Nah. Okay. There's, it's fine to expect to expect six wins this year. And it, and understand that he isn't for next year, right? It's whenever his contract catches up after right, the, yeah. the Panthers thing. Anyway. Whatever, yeah. Something yeah. like that. I am more. I just wanted to be technical. Yeah, I thank you, Shape. I appreciate that. come around more to that line of thinking. Be 
because Nebraska could have 11 guys back on defense. 10, we don't star- know the, 10 starters. Yeah, we don't know the coordinator yet for defense. <laughs> no. It's 10 yeah, starters. Like that's a big thing. The yeah. guy calling the defense. Yeah, no biggie. 10 starters. Don't you over here. 10 starters or 11 starters. I mean, O'Shawn, I don't I don't know what O'Shawn's going to, O'Shawn Mathis is going to to do and you can get... he's sticking around to be a player host for next week for an official mm. visit so mm. i don't think you're doing that if you're leaving necessarily see, that, that, see isn't that they could have 11 starting defenders i back. think you're an ernest hausman from the transfer portal a way of uh feeling pretty good about your defense coming back next okay year. and now at offense, least in terms of experience offense you could come up with seven returning starters you yeah. can come up with seven yeah. that's I mean, that's a that's lot of guys solid. back, Jake, for a team that's got a new coach. So that that is more in line with your excessive, I thought, demand. Excessive. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> think it was a demand. Difficult. Right. It's not, it's not a tough schedule. Right. I mean, Colorado is, is also going to have a first year head coach next it's, year. It's difficult in the sense that you need to be able to beat teams that you're at comparable level to talent wise or maybe greater than talent wise, which has been the big issue for Nebraska for five years now. If they Six bring all, if they bring, 10 guys back on defense that's allowing for one guy to leave that i mean the defense should be pretty good right you can at least be average to above average top 50 now the 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 problem is we get really locked in on like the 10 guys that come back they still have to get better up front they have to be better against the run well, if you bring back guys that weren't good against the run last year they're mm-hmm. not magically going to get better unless the coaching change or the scheme allows I was lose win and drew and you, you yeah. so you better get some you got to fortify not that those guys set the world on fire no they did they, i mean the the biggest thing for me with eric shenander was they were never able to replace damian daniels they didn't have that ready to no. go that's not just a shenander thing that's tony tuyote that's mike dawson that's scott frost they did not them. but that is you know we not. can talk until we're blue in the face about quarterbacks about adrian about fumbles about turnovers offensive play calling you're not winning in the Big Ten if you can't stop the run. And for four out of the five years, they couldn't stop the run. Well, di- didn't they get better, though, when Bush took over? They they did the, it the defense numbers defense because their, their linebackers tackled better. Yeah. Some of it some of it's hard because, I mean, they really played their worst four games of the year, their first four games. So they got better, but they were also doing stuff that you expect them to be able to do. Tackle. Luke mm-hmm. Reimer didn't tackle against Northwestern. If he plays like he did against Rutgers or Indiana against Northwestern, Nebraska wins that game. They allowed under Bush, it went 166.9 rushing yards per game. That That's 66.6 yards fewer than they were allowing under Chenander the first four. Yeah. So they got better. That's what I mean, though. Their defense, they played their worst four games, really, the first four games of the season. And they were awful. And the sad thing is... None of those teams, like, that was not a great North, Oklahoma Northwestern team. sucked in offense. North, North Dakota's not that good. Oklahoma's Georgia offense Southern, is not Southern, great. You know, yeah, you shouldn't felt, be allowing the runs no. that you did against no. Georgia Southern. Shenander's defense imploded. I mean, oh, it yeah. sounds really rough to say that, this but it did. Fact. Yeah. It's just truth. It, it imploded. It, yeah. I mean, if they, if they get the sort of... Uh, performance that they do against indiana in those four games you probably go three and one there's two very extreme examples of the term you're talking about a seven and five team there's two very extreme examples of the term coaching matters it mattered with shenander in a bad way it mattered and then when bush took over it mattered in in the opposite way it mattered man coaching matters i mean it's to me it was nebraska didn't have certain pieces um completely ready to go in those first four games and like what you're asking them to do they couldn't do like um some of the checks some of the calls some of the matching that they did they tried to do too much mike right well that's the point yeah and so then bill bush comes in and it's like we're just gonna do away with this yeah we're gonna stay in base a lot yeah we're gonna play a lot of these be lined up at the snap yeah and what a concept be lined up at have your feet set at the snap have your eyes right you can do that when you remove everything else that you're asking them to do and when you have two safeties that were relatively green, I mean, I think the loss of Dismuke and uh, Deontay Williams goes so much further than just like what they did on no the doubt. on the field. It's how they could set up other guys. Didn't need to be coached. Yeah, they didn't. They literally didn't need to be coached. And that's why the 2011 defense. You had three levels where you were really comfortable with that. You get into 2022, and I say 2011, yeah, 2021, 2020, uh, 2022. I mean. 
they liked the pieces, but they didn't have the mental reps and the physical reps to be able to match up the way that they wanted. So they simplified. You so know. Northwestern's a great – if you go back and you watch that game and you watch the defense before the snap, they are out of sorts mm. on, like, every play. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we talked about that. Even North Dakota's – or North Dakota's, They had so wide open holes. North Dakota, through. the guys were out yep. there with their hands up looking at each other. You could tell there's something. And, right. and, and then they have those big, big rushing lanes. Yep. You're how did that ma- – how did that happen? You know what, Chief? Didn't happen after Janander was gone. Right, because they just went to a they went to a base and they yeah. they didn't try to match up every snap. Yeah. No. It helped the teams that you played going forward from that point were very direct. Like they you weren't getting a lot of like oddity. You right. Know, and you were getting pretty direct offense. Probably Indiana accepted. Purdue accepted. Maybe. Yeah. Purdue they, accepted for sure. Rando thought the safeties the discussion was interesting. You're exactly right about Dante Williams and Markel Desmuke. The safety play got pretty good for Nebraska. Yeah. Farmers want now. Farmer he, is an example of development. He went from bad tackler to very good tackler. The Minnesota game was his best game of the year. Tackle. Uh, it's unfortunate the DUI happens right after that yeah. because it kind of I don't know that he played as well following that. Pretty but he had one. a really really good game against Minnesota, and that was a guy that I was very down on uh, after the first four or five games of the season. But man, he got better. Yeah. Man, he came. He got better and in. In Marquis Buford's good. I mean, he's a good player. He's just a guy that's going to be around the ball all the time. Yeah, and he's a willing tackler. Yeah, even it, though he's but not Farmer the got player. willing. Yeah, Farmer is a big safety who who now will come up and run support and smack you. Mm-hmm. And those big running backs are not easy to deal with. But you know what? He's a big safety. He can deal with it. Big safety, Jake. Yep, he is. Sometimes Jake looks at me big like I'm horse nuts. meets big safety. Yeah. That's right. That's you right. look at me like I'm crazy. Sometimes. Well, you are crazy sometimes, but not crazy that one. Okay. <laughs> Let's play the game. Specifically, give us, you're okay here. Give us a call right now at 464 568. Five a chance to win a business box of bagels to bagels and Joe. Sip is two and one in the week. I did not change the topic for today. You thought you guys teased you might. Oh, I didn't I, study I doubt you did, either. Though. I didn't. Study. Thursday night football, Rams and Raiders, all time leaders. That's your. Crappy I thought game. about this yesterday. I thought about texting you. I was like, that just seems unfair. That's your crappy game. Tonight. Rams, can't remember Raiders. Why, why would it be unfair? Well, I don't know. If you know Rams Raiders trivia, give us a call. 464-568. Raiders are your team. I, I should know this. Shut up. Simple starts right now. We've all been there. You're listening to the radio, and then that rage starts to grow inside of you. It starts to consume you. It gets to a point where you just want to yell, shut up, Simple. <laughs> <clears throat> no, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's your chance. It's time to shut up, Sipple. Call now to play. 464-5685. Shut up, Sipple. Brought to you by Bagels and Joe. All right, 464-5685. Call the Nick down Sip and Trivia. Trying to get another winning week with Schaefer here. Uh, how do you guys feel about Raiders and Rams all-time leaders? I don't know. You know, I was a Raiders fan when I was a kid. Recent vintage. I don't know much about the Raiders. Recent vintage. Well, this is all leaders, so you're probably in a good spot then. Hopefully. Schaefer? It just depends on how much passing they did. You know, like, it, it, I'm already sitting here wondering if you're going to ask the big question about quarterbacks, and then the way the game has changed, does that mean that uh, a recent quarterback would have thrown more than a guy from the 80s? We'll see. Uh, we got Eric. Eric, how do you feel about – Rams and Raiders, all-time leaders. I feel a little nervous, but I, I am I'm, I'm a little confident, but I, I'm going against Sip. I, I never feel good about that. So. Okay. Okay, so he's a Rams fan. You're a Raiders fan. So. Yeah. So Will Baker some... Mayfield be one of the answers? No. Here? Don't guess Baker Mayfield. <laughs> he might play tonight, by the way. What's the gentleman's name again? This is Eric. Hi, hey, Eric. Hi, Eric. Good, Eric. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. All right. All right. Uh, Schaefer, lifeline for Sip for one question. As always, Eric, here's your first question. Who leads... The Raiders in all-time receiving yards with 14,734 yards. I'm going to go with Tim Brown. Tim Brown is one correct. of the greatest wide receivers. Where's Cliff Branch on there? I think he was third. Okay. Third. Speed. Should I know who Cliff is? Seven. Yep, he was good. Pure speed. Do you know who Cliff yeah, Branch is? I know Cliff Branch. You've never seen a highlight. I have seen a highlight of Cliff Branch. I if he was walking on the street, you wouldn't know. Who was second? Who was second? I thought Blitnikoff might be Blitnikoff. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah Blitnikoff. All right, uh, Sip, first question down 1-0. Uh, 
Who has the most passing yards in Rams history with 23,758 yards? How many? 23,758 passing yards. Schaefer. I mean, I got a guess. I don't okay, feel hold on. super confident in it, but I have a guess. You will not lose a point if you go with Schaefer versus a steal. Schaefer, go. Kurt Warner. Ooh. Not Kurt Warner. Do you want that one, Eric, or not? Uh, you don't have to take it. I'm going to, I guess, I'm going to, I'm going to try, I guess. I don't know, I'm going way back. Uh, Pat Hayden? Okay, back to a 0 0 tie. He took, this, he took a risk. Jim Everett is the quarterback. Jim Everett. Oh, God. He's barely ahead of Mark Bolger. Remember that name? Okay. Warner's like fifth in the franchise. Really? I, I, I couldn't I remember if Warner had played enough years, but I know he put up monster numbers in the five years there. You know the Jim Everett story with Jim Rome? Yes. Cross, call me Chris. Chris. Everett. Chris. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah. We'll okay, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back to a 0-0 tie because uh, Eric went for the steal. 0-0 for the lead, Eric. Last question. Who leads the Rams in all-time rushing yards with 10,138 yards? I, I hope it's Marshall Falk. Oh, my gosh. I think like, I thought, I'm going to do this. Yes, Eric sir. Diggerson. Oh. Can I take a guess for just to say yeah, for the, for the fun of it? Is it – Former Mike Riley player, Stephen Jackson. It was Stephen Jackson. Who never would have gotten that in a million I years. think Falk was second. Um, I think Jackson beat Falk, and then he went to the Falcons for, like, his last year. Then he came and hung yeah. out here in Nebraska. That's right. For a couple and days. now what? All right, well, you have a chance. You're down zero to negative one. This is a disaster. Uh, and, Shaper, <laughs> can I help you? You already used him. So, this is on you now. It's a disaster. To get me. back to a zero-zero tie. Who who leads the Raiders? That's my word. Yeah, disaster is my word. Who leads the Raiders in all-time points scored with 1,799 points? George Blanda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thought about this for three seconds. I think he was second, but the answer is Sebastian Janikowski. Right. Oh, okay. Florida State guy, Raiders guy. I felt like that was in your I, thought, I, didn't, I didn't know it's Sebastian. He was there for 16 years. Well, Blanda was there for about that. Well, Blanda was two. Janikowski was, was Blanda, far above Blanda. Yeah. Was Blanda two? I believe he was second, but it was a distant second. Eric, congrats! You one day we'll get you back. Hey. Thanks for calling in and calling down the road. Thank you guys. I feel like I backed into that one. Yeah, you did, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, just Shut enjoy up, that. Simple. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, that was that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. Okay, tiebreaker before we get out of here. Uh, who wants this? I'll take it and Schaefer give the number. Speaking uh, of Sebastian Janikowski, he has a he attempted 100 field goals, exactly 100 field goals of 50 plus yards in his career. How many did he make of 100 attempts, 50 plus yard kicks? 57. Schaefer? Uh, I was going to go a little higher than I'll go over. 55. Ooh. So a great guess. Wow. You'd be wrong. I was going to say 62. It got really hot. It did. What's that all what about? Is there a – That's why we lost. It's like we boiling. <laughs> it's right. ah, like we're degrees. melting it here. I was focused. All right. Well, congrats to Eric. Guys. Yeah. Two that's and two th in the week, what? Zip. Two and two? Yep. We shouldn't have lost that That's bad loss. Skip the Kurt Warner. Well, you you went Steven for the Jackson. steal. You went for the steal on Dickerson. So he's way Jackson. down the list. I don't know where he's at. I don't, I don't have all 50 names memorized. <laughs> Schaefer has been fun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs>